for your comprehensive uh, presentation. Uh, so, uh, another example uh, of use uh, of uh, Earth observation data in support of weather-related impact assessment uh, is a RAZOR, a program that uh, before was uh, mentioned. And so, um, Giorgio Rudari from SIMA Foundation uh, will speak about that. Thank you. Thank you, Paola. <coughs> Thanks all I mean, for still being in the room because I understand it's been a very long day. I promise it's going to be a fast presentation. And not at all. I mean, there's no text, just figures, images, movies. So it should be, I mean, enough entertaining to keep you awake. Anyway, uh, this is presented within, you know, this national event, in a sense. But uh, in fact, I mean, RAZO was a multinational effort. It was an FP7 with a lot of a contribution from many countries, Netherlands, Germany, uh, Spain, Greece. I mean, everybody, I mean, contributed there, I mean, with their own expertise. And um, it was a big, I mean, FP7 project in the downstream Copernicus uh, framework. Uh, with one only big deliverable, I would say. So we wanted to construct basically a platform able to break down the risk equation, okay, by documenting the exposure properly, by simulating or even integrating hazard information if you have any hazard information or simulate new hazard information, and understanding and simulating also the vulnerability part that is always neglected or actually many times neglected. So I, I'm asking you to make a small effort, I mean, to move from what we consider normally modeling, that is more, you know, hydrological modeling, uh, hydraulic modeling, to go to risk modeling in a sense. So something that normally goes downstream to that. And I think it's also very useful because we talked many times, even today, about impact forecast. So I think is a key issue there. So what we wanted to do is really to provide a platform able to perform this type of computation in order to finally reduce risk. I mean, this is really like the, our only goal. The concept is very simple. So you have to imagine the platform as a trade space. So something that can really ingest all the possible products, mainly EO products, because we were, I mean, under the Copernicus framework, but not only that, I mean, even in situ information as well. And then you, we have, I mean, two possibilities of using the platform. One that is represented by the box upstairs, I mean, let's say, I mean, in the upper part of the slide. And if I have to look to you, I mean, I think that you mostly fit there, okay? So very expert users people that really are able to understand what they are doing in terms of modeling, and they want to, let's say, find some information inside the platform, get the information out of the platform, perform some computation in their own client system, and then bring it back to the platform for other users to see. I mean, so this is an expert user flow. Or you can sit, I mean, in the lower part of the slide, so you're not, let's say, an expert in modeling, you're an expert maybe in managing risk, and you would like to query the system and to understand what if happen, this happens, what would be the, you know, the scenario that I have to face if this happens, and you would like to interact with the system and produce new information in order to cope with it. And this is the box beneath. Uh, we performed a huge consultation with end users. This was also mentioned today many times. How are we reaching the end users? I mean, how do we satisfy them? We performed a consultation that lasted eight months to one year, so a long period, maybe too long. <laughs> but, I mean, we distilled basically I mean, some distinctive features of the platform. So the first one was, I mean, even though the platform was taught for, let's say, the recovery and mitigation part, it needed to be a full cycle product. So it has to be, you know, easy enough to be applied also during emergency condition or just, you know, in the preparedness phase where you are expecting something to happen. And we tried to do that. The second point is that we wanted to have, I mean, a platform not to model only one risk. I mean, not just river in floods, but all types of floods. Not only floods, but also severe weather and winds. Not only weather-related risk, but also geophysical ones, because they are all interconnected many times, okay? So we have, 
I mean, a lot of things that are related with WMO, so the bluer ones, but also the other ones that seem not related, we will see are related, in fact, in some cascading effects sometimes. We wanted to use something that was, you know, user-driven, so you could perform, I mean, queries and change parameters, I mean, in a very easy way. Maybe even too easy, we will see that, but uh, that that's was one of the aim, to change, I mean, some key parameters to verify what-if scenarios. Another thing was we wanted to model very different, you know, impacts, okay? Physical impacts, economic impacts, social impacts, human impacts, environmental impacts, all these kind of things in a quantitative way as much as we could. We wanted to do it with, a, let's say, in a framework that was open source, in a KISS framework, so keep it simple. Silly, we say, even stupid sometimes, okay? So, I mean, this is the, the thing of your app on your smartphone, okay? And interoperable as much as possible with other, type of, uh, with other types of platform. And last but not least, one would say, okay, okay it was driven by the combination of in-situ data and EO data. And if we cast, you remember the first graph I showed you, the, the most complex slide, I mean, with the platform, I know. If we cast it actually in the picture that uh, Professor Bernardini and also Laura was, you know, telling you, okay, of the core extent, collaborative ground segment extended, you can see that Razor fits perfectly there, okay? So Razor would ingest basically all the level from level zero to level two, level three products, added value products, in a smart way to public interfaces, okay? So that you can really, you know, produce added value products in turn. By sitting also, and this is not, I mean, a negligible thing, on a receiving infrastructure of a huge amount of data. Because, I mean, Sentinel data is terabytes of data every day, okay? On a big data infrastructure management framework, and also, I mean, with a big computing infrastructure. So we can think of doing many things with that. Now, I mean, actually, the, all the concepts I wanted to transfer to you, I mean, are there, okay? I'm just giving you some examples of application, okay? So imagine you have a world eye view, so a high resolution, very high resolution optical image. With a platform, what you could do is extract, for example, the features, okay? So, for example, the footprints of the buildings. You can characterize them and the platform guides you on how to characterize them, I mean, in terms of uh, what type of peril, for example, of hazard that you would like to, to, to perform the computation for. And also, I mean, guides you in the characterization of such hazards, I mean, among very different characteristics that are determining the vulnerability of that specific uh, asset. Uh, what you cannot do from satellite, you can do it in the field. So there is also a mobile application that enables you to go in the field and complete the information about the vulnerability in that place, starting from the satellite footprint at first produced. Then <coughs> let's think about I mean, an example. Okay, we are in the beautiful island of Santorini. Okay, a very dangerous place sometimes. Okay, we have an earthquake because it's a seismic area. This earthquake triggers the landslide or bet a rockfall. The rockfall falls into, falls into the caldera and actually creates a small tsunami where we can compute, you know, the tsunami wave, okay, height and also the arrival time of the tsunami wave. And also we can compute the run up of what is in happening, okay, for example, to the harbor, okay. So to know, I mean, if the island will be disconnected or connected to the mainland for, for example, emergency purposes. So this is the type of application you can perform the, with this type of platform. So cascading effects, you know, and these type of things, I mean, all in one place. Going to more, uh, let's say, hydrologic application, uh, but also, I mean, very well connected also to, uh, to other type of hazard. So here is the city of Jakarta. You know, I mean, there, there are a lot of problems in terms of coastal flooding in the city of Jakarta, also because of the subsidence. So you can measure subsidence rates, I mean, from the satellite, okay? You can consult them by <coughs> with the platform, but you can also combine this with a storm surge model and a custom flooding model to see what would happen 
For example, in 10 years from now, you know, extrapolating the subsidence rate uh, in 10 years. And you can cross compare, for example, how many people would be endangered by that same event in terms of frequency, but very different in terms of, in terms of impact. Okay? Northern Italy, just because we are in Italy, uh, we had in 2012 a very damaging earthquake in, uh, in Emilia Romagna, and I look at uh, <laughs> Silvano there. Uh, here you can simulate, for example, the earthquake. You can simulate and look at the effect that the earthquake might have on the levees, on the main levees of the Po River. You have, I mean, a fraction of probability of failure of them. Okay, and you can test, for example, with a dedicated hydraulic model, the levee bridge and impact. So, for example, I mean, you can set up fragility curves, you can look at the probability of failure of the bridge, and in case something is going to happen, okay, you can simulate, for example, a big flood event with a levee bridge condition, or even like a full bank with a levee bridge, okay, and then determine, for example, the impact on population and assets. Okay, so this is basically the idea. I have many more examples, but I think I'm running out of, ah, no, this is maybe this just one uh, here. This is like an, uh, an example in IET where, where you can combine very complex model with a very simple interface. So here you have a storm track. And what it does when you click the button, once you have, you know, basically even modified the storm track, it combines a storm surge model, okay, in the Gulf of Mexico, together with the rainfall runoff model and hydraulic model that takes the conditions from the, from the storm surge model to determine, in fact, you know, the condition of flooding, for example, in the city of Gonaif. And then we can cross compare, I mean, these results with what we can see from satellites. This was a Copernicus activation, for example, in 2004. For the, for the city of Gonaïf. And in turn, again, I mean, we can also, I mean, add value by uh, computing some economical indicators. Ah, many other things, but uh, let me skip. Let me skip, I'm sorry. A lot of nice figures. I mean, you, you, you can have the presentation maybe answer. This was Rotterdam. Uh, connection maybe with uh, other uh, Copernicus EMS, I mean, services. I mean, one is, for example, if you, can, you can have from satellite the grading maps. So, maps regarding the, the level of damage that are detected from satellites. And one thing that the razor can do, I mean, it can enrich this information in order not to have just a scale, so a categorization of damage, no damage, a lot of damage, or something like that, but also a, quantific a quantification in terms of economic parameters. And this is the idea. Or even in terms of functional parameters. So how many hospitals, how many, I don't know, emergency, I mean, assets have been damaged, for example. Uh, this is an application for agriculture, um, where you would use only satellite imagery, basically to understand, for example, what would be the impact of a flood in terms of, of loss of crop production and loss in terms of, you know, revenues for the agricultural uh, market in Malawi, for example, just for you know, just from you know, using satellite imagery. Here, you you said it all already. I mean, but I mean, this was the example of Genova that was I mean shown was shown at, at the beginning already, cross comparing, for example, different conditions in a cost benefit analysis framework in order to understand if you have to undertake certain you know flood measures or not. But we did it, for example, also in other places like Florence, for example, in a very extended, I mean, on a very extended part of the territory. And there, I mean, not only from the cost beneficial part, I mean, you have uh, by, for example, working at the asset level, at the single building level, and information really about not only protecting the city of Florence, because uh, one of the main problems, if an event like 66 would happen now. It's not the Florence city, but it's actually the Campuisencio industrial area that is going to bring something like, you know, 15 billion, okay, uh, damage in one single event. That would be an issue, I mean, for the GDP of Italy, actually, <laughs> in general. Um, final topic is uh, actually razor could be cast into a more complex framework, we've been talking about climate services, 
and uh, a lot WMO climate services. There is also a climate service provided by in the Copernicus framework. What we could do, we could think about you know, feeding the razor platform with some hazard coming from climatological uh, modeling, feeding it with exposure, with vulnerability, uh, that could go, I mean, could model also the evolution of the exposure and the vulnerability in future, and also, I mean, in analyzing the impacts uh, of such. And this, we could do it also by integrating supercomputing and grid computing facilities, like the, the one deriving from another big FP7 that we coordinated. And we, we did actually a trial, okay? And the trial was, I mean, uh, during the last hurricane that hit actually the Caribbean, the Hurricane Matthew. This is a computation done to, within that framework, just triggering it. And then we had, I mean, the possibility of uh, defining like a wind field in a maximum wind field in Razor, computing the damage in Razor, and also cross comparing with what was seen by the Copernicus services from satellite as well in a comparative way. I think I'm done. I'm sorry, you're looking at me. But uh, yes, so basically, one thing is just an, invita an open invitation to you, okay? Because what we are doing here is an open tool, it's a free tool. What we are trying to do is foster in a community of practice, what we heard many times as well. So please, I mean, go there, I mean, at the website that you see here, subscribe to the platform and use the platform. We have already 200 users, I mean, from 80 different institutions that are cooperating on the platform. Any contribution from your side would be really good. Thank you.